Hey guys, we've got a great conversation coming up here uh, with me on the line from all the way in Los Angeles, California. It is uh, uh, Jim Hansen of Indie Wrestle at Wrestling Life. I just said his it, just his Twitter name. Uh, <laughs> Indie Wrestle Life on the Twitter. Indie Wrestling Life. It's an account that has gotten my attention, and I'm so glad I can put a name and a voice to it now. Aside from what I'm reading online, how you doing, Jim? Good evening, Mike. It's good to good to talk to you, and uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Awesome. So, uh, first of all, we like to do a little get to know you uh, to start off. Uh, uh, you know, before we get into you know the subject matter at hand, but it is about wrestling. So, so my question is kind of what what's kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Oh, geez, this is really going to date me. So, uh, bear with me. Actually, I remember my first uh, experience with pro wrestling was back in the sixties. Um, as a young kid, um, when I was watching Bobo Brazil and Haystacks Calhoun wow. and, uh, the original Sheik and Flying Fred Curry, uh, Flying Fred Curry. And, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty intense back then. Um, and definitely, uh, using a lot of stereotypes and all that. And I remembered I just hated the Sheik because he was such a bad guy. That was actually something that, um, really turned me on to good guys versus bad guys as growing up, that there were villains and there, and there were heroes. Mm -hmm. And so that definitely transferred a lot into some of the stuff that I'm doing today. Excellent. And, and, and getting into that, like I said, um, uh, really caught my attention. I love seeing the Twitter uh, uh, pop up uh, as I as I'm, I'm going through that, and and I you know checking out what you're doing with the site. Even from the last time I checked out the site, there's a lot really going on there. Uh, tell me, what is indie wrestling life, and, and and kind of why why is this concept kind of uh, 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 obviously a newer concept that you're currently growing? Um, tell me a little about it and the thought behind it. Sure. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I'm a screenwriter from the Los Angeles area. And um, so one of the things that I realized as a writer is that I need to write from experience and I need to um, learn about what's going on and all that. And I follow, I follow pro wrestling pretty much uh, all my life. I kind of took a little break uh, when D-Generation X and the Attitude Era came, up, came around and all that. But uh, I've been pretty faithful about watching it and all that. But uh, during the time that I was on hiatus, uh, one of the things that I thought about was actually doing a pro wrestling film. And um, so I started coming up with some ideas and all that. And I was in the Los Angeles area at the time. I'm originally from Michigan. And um, so I really wanted to get to know some of the, the wrestlers to find out what makes them tick, what's going on and all that. So um, I got together with some of the guys from the SoCal area, and uh, in fact, uh, I was getting to know uh, Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks, uh, when they first started out. And so it was really great to spend time with them and some of the people that they were hanging out with, and just finding out why they why they did what they wanted to do, you know, why why they wanted to be indie wrestlers, and what did that mean to them. And what were the risks involved? And these are people that are just average, ordinary people. I mean, they do some pretty extraordinary things. But it, uh, I just looked at it and I said, you know what? These guys, if they get hurt, it is on them. They have to absorb the hospital bills. You know, they're taking risks with their lives. For, for what? I mean, you know, you can, uh, as indie workers, you can go to a show that has 16 people or they can have 600. You know, it all depends on the promotion. And so, you know, what what is it that really makes them tick? What makes them really come alive and all that? And what are some of the things that are, you know, I actually, um, one of my roommates, I had two two interesting roommates back in uh, back in the day. One was an Elvis impersonator and the other one was, was an indie wrestler himself. So it was interesting to just see, you know, why he did the things he did and and, and the sacrifices he made to do the things that he loved. And so uh, the whole idea is to create um, a community of uh, independent professional wrestlers along with uh, fans and promoters and all that to just really come together as a community and kind of have each other's backs and support one another. And, and uh, you know, if there are things that we need, you know, just to uh, just to be be there for them. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so it's it's been a really interesting journey so far. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it looks like you're getting a lot of reactions from things. So so the thing that really got me, so I, I've worked uh, among uh, 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 psychiatrists and, and kind of not motivational, but, but, you know, mindfulness and that kind of culture a little bit in some of, some of the clients that mm-hmm. I've had. So I immediately recognize the kind of uh, motivational cards that I, I see pop up on Twitter. And that, that, again, that's the first thing that kind of got my attention here. Um, like even, even, you know, uh, stuff like promoters, are you reaching out to your community besides asking them for, to buy tickets? Like you're, you're, you're sending these, these quotes out like, again, like you said, to that community of indie workers, right. Or, or there were these like amazing, like inspirational, like, like things that, that I would normally see like, Hey, you know, you, you be the best you kind of stuff, but like sure. squarely directed or appreciative stuff of, I think yeah, I didn't, I think an, an early one that I saw was like uh, talking about guys like RJ city, which, uh, you know, I think is come on Colgo band as being like one of the most underappreciated indie workers out there, you know? Absolutely. Uh, Agreed. So, I mean, what, what kind of, you know, and now that makes sense. Like talking about how you're trying to make that community go. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that kind of, um, very visual, motivational kind of direction that, that that I'm seeing on here. Sure, I think that the biggest thing in any profession, no matter what it is, is we're always following our own lead. And so, it, for indie workers and all that, it is a lonely business. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you're out there, you know, busting your butt for little or no pay taking risks with, risks with your life and all that, you need to feel like you're being appreciated and supported. And so this is one of the ways that, you know, I want to do you know, to convey that is to really just, you know, zero in and say, what are the things that matter to indie workers, you know, um, indie wrestlers? And, you know, how can we do better to support each other? I really feel like um, the indie wrestling community is very fractured. Um, that everybody's kind of doing their own thing, which is really great. And that's great for diversity and, and variety and all that. But at the end of the day, what is that really getting us? You know, there are a lot of people out there, out there and this really talks about, uh, goes to the indie wrestling spotlight that I'm doing, is giving wrestlers who don't have a name of any type or who want to get to, you know, want, you know, want to be seen. Um, the opportunity of doing that. And it's just, you know, how can we support these people? Um, You know, I really believe that, um, you know, every indie worker's dream is to go to the WWE. You know, that is like the golden ticket. Okay, which is great. You make a lot of money and all that, but you're not going to be there forever. And I really believe that it is not the destination. I think it's just part of the journey. And one of the things that I'm really concerned about is all these indie, you know, indie wrestlers that are becoming glorified stuntmen that may be taking some risks with their bodies. And it only takes one bad, one bad move to end a career and and end a life. So it's like, okay, what do you do after, you know, your body says enough of this? You know, how can you then? create that life afterward or create that life in the, in the interim, you know, as you're, as you're moving towards your goal. And so I'm looking at things like the promoters, you know, what are they doing? Are they, you know, we've heard all sorts of stories about promoters, how they don't pay or they pay a little or don't give you gas money if you're lucky, or they don't, they may not even tell you that the show is canceled. You know, how can we get everybody to raise, you know, bring their A game? And what does that mean? And so that's, I'm really looking at it from a holistic point of view. You know, what can we do better as a community to strengthen, encourage, and support one another? Certainly, that's good. wow. A, a indie wrestling unity and 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 it's insane. <laughs> I know it's insane. What a, what what a concept! But it's just a matter of saying, look, everybody out there who's busting their butts, you know, they matter. You know, and that and, and people don't hear that enough. That you know. What they're doing in life matters. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and you never know whose life you're going to impact by the work that you do. You know, if, you know, if it wasn't for Bobo Brazil, I would have never gotten, you know, interested. You know, he was, he was my guy back in the day. 
you know, and so, you know, then I went to Hulk Hogan and then I found out, oh my God, you know, it's, you know, this is, this is a work, you know, and, and so I'm just like, okay, uh, but, you know, uh, in terms of having those role models, in terms of having those people that you look up to and, and, uh, you know, having them stand for the right things, because we've heard, you know, we've heard all sorts of different stories throughout the years about people in the business who have, uh, have not exactly been honorable. And so this also gives us a chance to show up in a different way. Uh, by challenging each other to raise the stakes, uh, raise uh, the level of how how they how they you know prepare for a show and get ready for a show and all that, and look at alternatives too. Uh, one thing that I'm very passionate about is helping. The, you know, it's just like if you're an actor. Okay, I mean, you know, when you really look at it, um, it's not to slam wrestlers at all, uh, but uh, wrestlers are actors in tights. For the most part, you know, they can sell the hell out of stuff that they're good. Um, and so what are the things that they can do to support themselves other than trying to sell T-shirts? You know, how, how can we do that? How can we, you know, let people know that they're alive and that they want to work on a consistent basis? So that's part of what I'm doing, too. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh Jeez, uh, I'm, 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 as you're going, I'm looking and, and uh, bringing up some of the images for our video people. Um, just some some great, great stuff in here. And now I'm like, okay, yeah, he's definitely a screenwriter. Now I'm reading these uh, in a different light here. <laughs> so, uh, like, everything yeah. is coming together in my head. <laughs> So <laughs> yes, it's it's all fitting together now. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, because I got that vibe. Because one one thing it harkens back to, I don't know if you're aware of the uh, We Want Wrestling movement that happened a few years ago, which was actually Dave Lagana, currently with TNA, former writer for uh, WWE, um, and mm-hmm. it was kind of his project when he left WWE. Right? Uh, he had a podcast around it. Uh, we we had him on 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 the show as well, talking about that movement. And um and you know obviously they're doing you know some pretty interesting stuff with TNA. Uh, however, you think about the rest of that that's going on there, as I see you're sharing our midweek war about TNA, so <laughs> I know you're touching base <laughs> on that. Um, but um, but but there's definitely that vibe. It's it, it, it's um an insider vibe, but it's a very like this is what everybody's dealing with. I think it's really cool to kind of see that 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 side of stuff. So as you're going, you know you have the motive, you, you have the the uh, uh, mission. Uh, uh, lined out here. What's kind of uh, obviously you're in early stages of this site, um, and 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 where it's gone, as you know, but it's going amazing so far. What's kind of the future of where you want to get this thing to be at? Well, definitely want to create um, a really vibrant community that actually, you know, uh, would uh, you know, will have forums and all that where people can speak their minds, but also. Um, my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal would to be able to have a funding me- mechanism in place where if an indie worker gets hurt, uh, if they're falling on hard times or something like that, that they could be supported because, you know, we've heard, uh, I, I think that there is, you know, it's really sad when I hear about some of, uh, the old grapes like Sabu and, uh, gosh, uh, other people that have just fallen on hard times. And you know what they they really worked their asses and 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 you know gave the best of their lives for us you know to entertain us and all that and it would be really really great that if, you know there could be some sort of scholarship or a foundation uh, that would be able to support those people when they're running uh, when they're having an issue because nothing is worse than and I'll be honest with you I'm not a big f- uh, fan of GoFundMe because anybody will just you know, slap, uh, you know, slap, slap something up there and say, give me money and all that. Um, but if we know who these people are, you know, if we are a community, if we are tr- if we truly care about these people, then, you know, let's, let's pony up and let's, let's really come together so that we can support them and, and support each other in the process and know that if, you know, there is that type of, uh, if ever that type of thing would happen to us, that there would be something uh, there for them, that they wouldn't be destitute. Um, so that's I, I feel very, very strongly about that. And one of the ways that I want to see that happen is I'm actually finishing one script 
um, that is going to be really excited. In fact, I'm uh, going to be speaking with Mr. RJ City about it pretty soon. Uh, he is a hell of an actor, if you don't know, uh, and a hell of a performer. And so uh, I'm going to be talking with him about that. And then also I have another feature film that is going to uh, be working on writing and then also developing um, – a TV series. And I really want to tell the stories from a place of authenticity mm-hmm. because I've noticed within, um, the, um, the movies about wrestling, pro wrestling are terrible. The only good movie that has come out was Mickey Rourke's film, the wrestler. Everything else has just been really bad and very stereotypical and treating the fans and the, and, and, and the wrestlers in such a bad light. It's like, who would want it? Who would want to pay attention to that? And so, and you, you look at the box office that these films have done and, you know, it's just, we need stuff. If it's, I, I really believe that in order for it to be successful, you know, to tell an indie story, you're going to have to be an indie filmmaker. So there you go. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> that's great. I, <laughs> wow. I, I feel like, I feel like we could have a, a whole another podcast just talking about filmmaking. Uh, but uh <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. It, yeah, and that's yeah, that's 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 another another story for another day. But I do feel com- I, I really do fa- feel passionate about helping people. Some of the people that have shared their stuff with the indie uh, wrestling life spotlight. Uh, some of the things that they've just shared are phenomenal. And you know, what would they do if they didn't wrestle, or what would happen if they didn't make it to the WWE? Yet? You know, you get the, well, I'm going to make it no matter what because, you know, I don't give up or whatever to, you know, I would be just fine, mm-hmm. you know, making a contribution in, in somebody else's life, like being a teacher or being a coach or something like that. And it really, so, uh, and, and it really yeah. is the right time to do that. Like, I mean, myself in my own career, it's like I didn't like the job I had. I went and made this thing over here, Right. Uh, and, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, Cole, Cole Cabana talks about that on his podcast, as you know, like a lot, like, Hey, this didn't work out. What's the next thing? You know, we're all figuring that out. And it's almost a great time for a wrestler, for an entrepreneur, you know, whatever the case may be, screenwriter probably as well to, to, okay, the mainstream thing didn't work. The WWE thing didn't work. What can we make over here? We have all these tools at our disposal. There are some phenomenal uh, performers. There, there really are, mm-hmm. and I really see you know some 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 huge opportunities to really not only do the films but also tie them in with uh, you know doing doing a, a tour of uh, the people that are the the indie wrestlers that are in the film, mm-hmm. and you know uh, having them you know where we actually do cards in various cities, so it's more of a transmedia type of experience. And so, you know, um, I'm, I'm really excited about the prospects moving forward. That's amazing. Wow. I, I'm even more hyped now than I was going into this. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I, was, I was hyped to hear from you, too. And uh, <laughs> so I, I've done a few podcasts before, you know, and, uh, but this is really great. And I, I, I really enjoyed having this conversation. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, well, hey, I want to get down to, uh, as we do here in the Indie Mayhem show that I ended off with here, uh, so, so first of all, what are you watching today? What's got your attention or side could be what writing wise has your attention? What, right. Okay. So, uh, a few things have my attention. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm interested in finding more, uh, you know, and I'm doing some research and seeing some matches and all that on super kick. Yeah. Um, they're just insane over there. Uh, you know, some of the matches that I've seen and all that. And also I'm, uh, I'm really, uh, interested in Lucha Underground too. I've been watching that and, um, just the production values and all that. And, uh, I mean, when you've got Robert Rodriguez behind it, I mean, come on, really? I mean, you know, it's just very well, well, uh, very well done. And so have a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, a lot of respect for it. And so there are other things, you know, I'm also looking at um, IWF in, I believe it's New Jersey. Uh, and from the standpoint, not not necessarily of, the, you know, the match quality, but also by the way that they're giving back to the community and, you know, really taking, you know, youth under their wings and all that. You know, you see them being involved in their communities. And that's something that I bring up with, you know, in one of my latest tweets is that promoters, 
if you want people to invest in you, you've got to, you've got to, invest, you've got to invest in them too. And so if you want them to come to your matches and all that, or you want them to come to your shows, then be visible within the community and give back so that they can see that you're around and, be, and that you care. And when you care, they'll care. That's great. Great advice. Amazing stuff. Um, so typically, uh, I usually ask what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling at this point. Uh, so I, I, I guess, I guess I'll ask what's the best and worst thing about screenwriting. <laughs> well, I can answer this thing about wrestling too. I mean, you know, sure. the best thing that I see about wrestling is the amazing talent that is out there that is untapped. Uh, and, uh, the worst thing that I see is that, uh, you know, I'm going to go back to some of the high flying stuff and all that. Um, uh, the worst thing is that I'm seeing a gravi- uh, people gravitating away from storytelling, uh, where they really are kind of sacrificing, um, sacrificing, um, you know, uh, technique and, and in ring psychology and all that for, you know, who can do the crazy, the craziest stunt, you know, and not get killed. Uh, and that's something I love pro wrestling gorilla, but that's one thing I wish they kind of, you know, they've got their brand. I get it. Uh, but I would really like to see them tell more stories during their matches. Certainly. Certainly. I feel like Lucha Underground has a nice mix of that. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I gravitate more toward that. Yeah. And so I actually have met uh, John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Mundo and all that. And really good guy. Uh, still got a lot of... Uh, uh, still just a, a, a fantastic performer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, wow. Uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, tell people where can they find uh, uh, indie wrestling life and everywhere that's important. Okay. So anyway, uh, we do have a Wix site right now, but if you Google indie wrestling life, we are at the top. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, but also um, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at indie wrestle life. And then on Oh, on Wix, uh, it is indie wrestling life, uh, dot Wix site dot com slash indie life. And so, uh, yeah, so feel free, uh, make sure, uh, we are actually, because we really want to, uh, build the community and all that, follow us on Twitter. If there are any, are, are any indie wrestlers that want to be part of the spotlight, we would love to do that. We're actually thinking about doing five spotlights next week. Wow. Um, and, and it's really exciting because we've got, uh, Tyler Matrix from Ohio Valley Wrestling and, uh, some other people that will be part of that. And, uh, we actually have, um, Mark Wheeler from Superkick online for next week. Awesome. Yeah. Poking around at those a little bit during this, uh, looking at a little bit of the Superkick footage during this interview as well, uh, for our video viewers. Thank you so much, Jim, for joining us. I'm really looking forward to see what, what comes out of this. I really hope to to see the movie down the line here and whatever comes of that. Absolutely. It's absolutely needed here. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.